All right, for this problem, it says we have to figure out which of these following choices do all three points lie on the same straight line. All right now, there's a couple of ways to do this problem. We could just graph each side of these points and then just see if it forms a straight line. Or what we can do is we can kind of take a look at this as if it were in a table and see if the change of the y values is consistent with the change of the x values, meaning that they have the same slope. So let's go ahead and start with choice A here. So let's say we have an XY table and we take all of our X values and put them in the X column, zero, negative one and one. And then we take all of our Y values and put them in the Y column. So we have one, three and three. Then what we would do is we would study the change in Y and the change in the corresponding X values and see if it is a constant rate of change. This is the key here. It has to be a constant rate of change. So we can see that from this y to this y, it increases by two, and the corresponding x values decrease by one. Now, if we express that as the change in y over the change in x, which is the slope, that would be two over negative one. Now let's go ahead and see if from the next point to the next point has the same slope or something different. So from three to three, that goes up by nothing, the change is zero, and from negative one to positive one, that increases by two. So we would have a change in y of zero over two, and we can say that the rates of change are not equal to each other. So we would say that these three points right here do not lie on the same straight line. All right, let's go ahead and check out choice B. All right, so for choice B, the x values are four, two, and four. So we're gonna write four, two, and four. And for the y values, we have two, one, and negative two. All right, so let's start with the change in y's. So from two to one, that decreases by one. The corresponding x values decrease by two. And then for the next pair of points, we go from positive one to negative two, which is a decrease of three. And from two to four, that is an increase of two. Now we have to express this as a slope and the change in y for the first pairs of points would be negative one for the change in y's compared to negative two for the change in x's. And if we simplify that, that would be one half. Remember two negatives make a positive. And for this change here, we have negative three compared to positive two. So the change here, or the rate of change, is negative three over two. That is the slope of the line that would be formed by this point and this point. So we can see that the rates of change are not identical. So we can say that they are not equal to each other, meaning that B is not one of the choices. So we have eliminated A, we've eliminated B. Let's go ahead and figure out if C would have points that form a straight line. All right, so for choice C here, the X values are zero, eight, and zero, and the Y values are zero, zero, and eight. All right, so the first change in Y value is zero as compared to positive eight for the X's. So that would be zero over eight. And from zero to eight, that would be an increase of eight as compared to a decrease in eight for the corresponding X values. So that would give us positive eight over negative eight, which is actually equal to negative one. Now we can clearly see that these are not equal to each other. So it cannot be choice C, which means it must be choice D. But let's go ahead and just confirm this. All right, so the X values for choice D are one, two, and four, and the corresponding Y's are two, four, and eight. With the first pair of points, we go from two to four, which is an increase of two, and the corresponding x's increase by one. So that would be a rate of change of two to one. And for the next pair of points, we go from four to eight, which is an increase of four, and from two to four is an increase of two, which would be a rate of change of four to two. Now, these rates of change are in fact equal, because if you took four over two and simplified it, it would be two over one, because both of these numbers are divisible by a common factor of two. So if we divide two into four, that's two. Divide two into two, that is one. So we would say that choice D is the correct selection. 
if we were to graph these three points on the coordinate plane, they would lie on a perfectly straight line. Hey, I just want to say thanks for checking out this math tutorial. Please don't forget to hit that subscription button and enable notifications so you can be informed as I upload new math tutorials to my math channel. Till next time, this is Shane Masonette with Masonette Math.